What's up y'all and welcome back to the Grind Time Shop for another installment of 2021 Commonly Asked Screen Printing Questions with the Grind Time. Roll it! Okay, so the next question that everybody always has is how do I burn a screen? But wait! You're getting way ahead of yourself. We need to slow down and rewind for a second. The next step and often one of the most crucially overlooked parts of the process is burning a good transparency. Good transparency. Notice that I said good transparency. That's because I've seen a bunch of horrible transparencies. Anyone can make crappy transparencies, but the first step to making high quality screen printed garments is making great transparencies. Now these are often referred to as negatives. Don't let this term confuse you. It's just a more bougie way of saying transparencies. Okay, so moving on. <laughs> Now, when dealing with transparencies, it is important to note there are nicer printers and there are nicer transparencies, okay? Experiment and find out what works the best for you. But for us, S-Race paper from Amazon seems to work pretty good. It's budget-friendly, it delivers quickly, and we haven't had any issues with it as far as we go. And this printer has been a workhorse from day number one the Canon PIXMA IX6820 is an inkjet printer that for a purchase price of less than $300 can get you started printing your own transparencies. This printer has been great not only because it has a very attractive price point, but also because it prints media up to 13 by 19 in size. Now some of you may be thinking that sounds really big and you're right 13 by 19 is pretty big when you compare it to an eight and a half by 11 sheet of notebook paper but you will quickly come to find out that for a lot of jobs an eight and a half by 11 transparency is just really not gonna be big enough. The next step up would be an 11 by 17 tabloid, and actually that's what we use for about 90% of the jobs in our shop. Now we know that the Canon PIXMA IX6820 can handle 11 by 17 transparency, but what happens when you get that client that wants just a little bit bigger of a print? They want an oversized print. And you don't want to be caught with your pants down when somebody wants an oversized print. Now, depending upon the size of your designs, you may actually have to step up from the standard 20 by 24 screens and the standard size pallets for your press. So do your due, ju mm. <laughs> so do your due diligence and test your maximum print size before you go quoting a job that you actually can't handle. But what is the largest media size that our printer can handle? Drum roll, please. <laughs> 13 by 19. Are you starting to catch on here? So this less than $300 Canon printer can not only handle 8.5 by 11 media, 11 by 17 media, but it can actually go all the way up to 13 by 19 printed media, which we already went over earlier, is pretty freaking big. But that's enough about printers and how awesome Canon is. Love you, Canon. Now you need to go into your design platform of choice. The industry standard for this and what we're going to be using today is going to be Adobe Illustrator. But there are a few things that you need to remember when it comes to printing your transparencies through Illustrator on the Canon PIXMA IX6820. Now, first things first, we need to go ahead and open our registration template. And some of you may be asking, what's a registration template? Or where do I get one? Don't worry, I got you on both. A registration template is what you are going to use to actually line your design up to the center of the transparency. It's also what we'll use to line the actual screen up to the palette so we ensure that we're printing in the center of the actual t-shirt. It's also what you will use to line up multicolor prints to each other to ensure that you get a 100% coverage of your over color on your base color. So since having a good set of registration templates is one of the first tools you need in your arsenal, 
we're hooking you up with our three most used Illustrator registration templates for free. That's right, just follow the link in the description of this video and you'll be able to go download our 8.5 by 11, our 11 by 17, and our 13 by 19 registration templates for Adobe Illustrator. Put them to good use. Now that we've opened our registration template, today we'll be working in the 11 by 17 registration. We're going to want to copy paste or drag our artwork into the registration template. Today we're going to be working with a single color version of our Drippy Ink logo just to kind of show you what we're doing. So we're going to drop our artwork into the artboard. We're then going to want to make sure that everything here is grouped in case any of these little pieces that you see inside of the design might be separated. We can do that by pressing Command G, making sure that they're grouped. From there we want to make sure that everything is lined up and centered to the registration marks on our artboard. We do this by selecting everything on the artboard, going down to our alignment tool, ensuring that it is set to align to artboard, and then centering the image. From here we'll go ahead and adjust the spacing of where we want our design, where we feel like it looks the best, and then we'll go ahead and stop. Now the next step is very, very important probably the most important step of the process. So if there is only one thing that you learn from this entire video, let it be this. When making registration templates and burning transparencies for screen printing, we only print transparencies in true black ink. True black ink. When burning a screen, the printed transparency acts like a pair of sunglasses that actually shades the light from exposing the emulsion wherever the transparency is taped on. This allows all other parts of the screen to be exposed by the light. While the other emulsion is being exposed to light, it's hardening by the second, allowing you to go back later and wash out the parts of the screen where your transparency was shading the light coverage from the actual emulsion. True black is the only color that you can print with the proper density to actually achieve good burns for your screens. So always make sure you're set to true black. Now let's move forward. After your image is selected, you're gonna wanna come on over here to your appearance tool and you're gonna wanna find the fill. And this is where we're gonna choose our true black ink. If you have any questions, you can go over here to the color mixer and you can actually see that it is 0, 0, 0, 100% black. This is where you need to be. Now for screen print and graphic design, it's important to note that we work in Illustrator in vector images. However, vector images are not actually print ready images. Rasterizing our final image is the perfect way to ensure that we get a crisp print ready image printed to our transparency. So next we'll need to head up over to our artboards. We'll need to duplicate our artboard layer. And now let's rasterize this bad boy. We can rasterize our image by selecting the entire image and heading up to the object selection tool in our panel. Go on down to rasterize and we'll select transparent at high resolution of 300 PPI and select OK. And bingo bango, this thing's ready to send to print. We're going to want to head on over to our file print window because there's a few important things to remember when printing transparencies with the Canon PIXMA IX 6820. We'll need to make sure that we've got our range selected. So we want artboard number five. We'll need to make sure that we're set to the correct size for this. It's going to be tabloid borderless for our 11 by 17. And then we'll need to go into the actual print setup. And you'll want to ensure a few important things. One, quality and media is always going to need to be set for matte photo paper. Uh, the paper source is always going to be rear tray. And the print quality is always going to be high. Now, because we are printing only in true black ink, we're going to want to go ahead and make sure that we have our grayscale printing enabled. And press print. Now, when loading your transparency, you're going to realize that there's two different textured sides. One's going to be a really glossy, shiny, smooth side, while the other is going to be a more textured, kind of gritty, rough side. This textured, rough side is going to be your print side. So make sure you find out what your printer takes as far as media and print sides. If you go print side down, you're going to make a mess. You don't want to do it. So just always with the Canon PIXMA 
IX6820 print side up. Now it's time for this bad boy to do its thing, and it will help you get far in accomplishing the best screens that you can make inside your shop. Thank you again for checking out the video. If you made it all the way to the end, please make sure to smash that subscribe button, leave a like, let us know what you want to see in future episodes. Next week we'll be discussing burning your own screens with Alan, so be on the lookout for that. But as always, we hope y'all have a wonderful day, and from the grind time shop to wherever you are, peace, and have a good one. We'll see you soon.